Uh, the question is that the motion be agreed to. I call the Honourable Louise Upsner. Uh, Mr Speaker, I agree with probably a, a couple of minor things that the Minister has said, but one thing that surprises me, uh, Mr Speaker, is that in the House this afternoon there's been vociferous debate about uh, select committee scrutiny, about the extension of uh, report backs for select committee to provide additional scrutiny um, for the EEZ legislation, which is a three-page bill, to go back to a select committee for scrutiny. And yet today we have 500 pages of an SOP that no member of the public, let alone this House, will get to scrutinise. Uh, and policy neutral. So we've, we've, heard, we've heard a comment uh, from the other side about the significant rewrite bill, which of course hadn't been touched for 50 years, and legislatively it was a mess. It was unintelligible and absolutely needed to be tidied up. But Mr Speaker, one thing that puzzles me is that for um, the government who supposedly want to have a more empathetic and responsive system don't see that the government of the day should have taken opportunities to make some minor policy changes to ensure greater wellbeing for vulnerable children and to enable greater flexibility to support some beneficiaries and to support the very New Zealanders that side purports to represent. So let's, let's just have a look at what these minor policy changes were and uh, see if our listeners disagree about whether or not they would advance the best interests of children. Here's one. Here's one around uh, children whose parents are separated. So it is a situation of split care both parents, one parent might have one child, the other parent might have two, both are not in work. This change would allow both of those parents to claim the sole parent benefit. But no, that side of the House says no, we're going to make those children suffer because of this minor change. Let me give you another one. And again, I remind the Minister of her own comments, which were about having working income, having a social security system that was, quote, empathetic and responsive. So guess what? If you are a step-parent, if you have a child, both its biological parents have passed away, that is one vulnerable child that every New Zealander should support. But no, nope, they're not entitled to the same support as other parents. So minor changes minor changes that at the very heart of the intent were about supporting children who needed the support the most, the government's decided to kick out, which is unbelievable, unbelievable. Having a system that is easier for frontline staff to navigate and, for, and easier for the very people who need it most is absolutely staggering. Uh, but I want to, I want to introduce uh, a couple of other issues because um, there's another item, uh, Mr Speaker, that uh, has been amended um, by this government. And, and this is official advice. So the government is ignoring official advice about how to improve the structure of legislation from the Legislation Advisory Committee 2014 guidelines, which is about what should be in primary legislation and what should be in secondary legislation. And I know, Mr Speaker, for some people that doesn't mean a lot, but when you are rewriting a piece of legislation for the first time in 50 years, make sure you follow the advice of the Legislative Advisory Committee. Uh, but no, no, this government knows best. They don't think the public should have a say on 500 pages of an SOP. They've dumped it on the table a couple of hours before this debate with the intention of ramming it through the committee stage tomorrow. Well, I say that's not good enough for a government that's supposedly open and transparent, who's open to public scrutiny. This is absolutely lousy, lousy process. And I want to give you another example of how lousy this process is. 
Because normally what happens, normally what happens, uh, Mr Speaker, when a piece of legislation is drafted, or you could argue with a supplementary order of this magnitude, that the officials, officials then write a departmental disclosure statement or a regulatory impact statement. Has this been done? No. So here's another example of a government shortcutting due process, good process. This is all around making good law. So I say to that minister, are you saying, is the minister saying there is not one mistake, not one mistake in this SOP? Because Mr Speaker, we saw, we saw in the bill previously, it was one mistake. One mistake has been quite significant for this House, quite significant, but that one mistake, Mr Speaker, is being fixed and is being scrutinised by a select committee. This isn't. This isn't. 500 pages is absolutely outrageous for the government uh, to do, particularly it's Transparency Week this week. Uh, perhaps they didn't read the memo about Transparency Week. And it's really interesting because I want to uh, draw your attention, as the Minister did, to the Labour Minority Report. Because in the Labour Minority Report, the Labour Party members were worried about, guess what? Public accountability and scrutiny. The Minister doesn't care about it now. Doesn't care about it now. It's too arrogant to think that members of the public who have an interest in this the very beneficiary advocacy groups, she's too busy quoting, getting the next person to speak to make sure they fill in the blanks that she didn't cover, because I bet, I bet the House there's at least one mistake in this SOP. So you'll be bringing it back to fix it. But the other interesting thing is, from the Labor and the Green Minority Report, and I would have thought the Greens are really disappointed with this legislation, because the one critical thing for them as they went into the election was the removal of excessive sanctions. And the Minister had the ability in the families package before Christmas, but didn't do it. Uh, the Minister's had the ability to remove sanctions in this legislation, hasn't done it. So the Greens must be pretty gutted that their principal social welfare policy is being ignored uh, by the Minister. And the interesting thing is, is this is a, just a completely missed opportunity for the government. The Minister has said there's this uh, a significant overhaul required to, quote, make the system more empathetic and responsive. First opportunity, first piece of legislation, missed opportunity. Not doing it. Not doing things that support the very New Zealanders, the very children that you have said is important. Uh, and, Mr Speaker, there's another item that I thought was worth bringing to the House's attention, because on numerous occasions the government of the day, led by the Prime Minister, have talked about um, the fact that this government will put the interests of children at the heart of everything they do. I bet the House that this piece of legislation, this 500-page SOP, has not gone through the scrutiny to see what is the impact on children. That's right. Because there are children living in households who should be getting more than they are today, getting entitlements, Minister, that they're not entitled to today, and you're missing the opportunity to help those families, to help those very poor and vulnerable families to get more income, to get more benefits than they are today. It's a hugely missed opportunity. I'm staggered. I'm absolutely staggered that the Ardern Peters government is ignoring a golden opportunity to support those who need it most, instead taking away changes, taking away changes that simplify the system, make it easier for people to get the support they need. And the principles that have been removed, the principles of social investment, is about supporting those who need it most. So that's what I'm finishing on. This bill originally was about supporting those who need it most, having legislation that was understandable, workable and easy for MSD to navigate and for the very people that are supported by it, understand it and can get better access to what they're entitled to. 
complete contradiction, absolute outrage that that side of the House won't allow scrutiny for an SOP that is 500 pages. I call the Honourable Hene Henare. Tēnā koe te mānga i o te whare, kā tira tēnā tātou katoa.